Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us Need Software to 213-640-9738. That's 213-640-9738. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. Racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Baiter. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Baiter now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. Welcome to another episode of Tariq Radio. I am your gracious host. My name is Tariq Nasheed. Glad to have everybody tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. We're here. I'm doing the, the main show a little late in the week, but we're here. We've made it. We're here. We're doing our thing, and I'm glad you guys have tuned in. I need you to hit that like button, and I need you to hit that subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen, and hit that bell notification so that you are notified when I go live. We're going to take that real quick commercial break, but don't you move a muscle, ladies and gentlemen, because we will be right back right here on Tariq Radio. Don't move a muscle. Listen up, squares. You need to get the legendary book on game, The Art of Mackin, by author Tariq King Flex Nasheed, available on Amazon right now. Can you dig it? This book has been a bestseller for 20 years, Jack, and the New York Times called it a classic. That means it's out of sight. So this book ain't for no lames who ain't trying to learn the game. Jive turkeys. So if you're ready to stop slacking in your macking, get the Art of Macking book on Amazon and Barnes & Noble right now. Sucker. Rated PG. That stands for plenty of game. Jive chumps. Listen up, squares. You need to get the legendary book on game, The Art of Mac. Have you been feeding your skin quality ingredients? Are you dealing with any type of skin condition such as eczema, hyperpigmentation, body acne, or discoloration? Here at Joy House Essentials, our triple whip shea butter is 100% handmade and whipped to perfection, guaranteeing results you will see and feel instantly. Give your skin the nourishment it deserves and stop using harmful, chemical-based products today. You can find us at www.thejoyhouseshop.net or give us a follow on Instagram at jheshop. Joy House Essentials. Let's elevate together. Tune in to the Amiri Brown Show on YouTube where they discuss all topics intrinsic to the black experience from dating and marriage to race, economic, social issues, and politics. Subscribe to the Amiri Brown Show channel and tune in throughout the week. Make black America great again or die trying. Bro, stop playing and start spraying. Leave an op on the ground where you stand. At all costs, yeah, make sure you protect it. Old goon juice, the formula been tested. You can defend yourself if you find that you need a little help. Gotta stay ready, ain't no love in the street. Pepper spray straight to the face, make them get weak. Get it at oldgoonjuice.com. If they thinking you slipping, then tell them to come get them some. If you packing this, you won't be lacking. A shot to the eye in them problems you having. Maximal strip hit them haters on ground. So you can feel free when you out in the town. Old Goon Juice and don't forget a shirt, man. You gotta stay ready. That evil on lurk. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. You are now tuned in. 
attention to the legendary OG, OG. Tariq Nasheed. I want to have a yes to all my friends. On Tariq Radio. Where is Tariq getting all this cash? Oh, we're back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have y'all tuning in. Hope you guys had a great week. A lot of stuff going on this week. I'm doing the show very late this week, man. We've just been taking care of a lot of stuff this week just with the new movie. Oh, man, taking care of stuff with getting the museum, building, settled and secure. We're taking care of that. I've been doing a lot of stuff in regard to getting the museum building together. So we're signing a, signing a lot of documents and just going through wire transfers and escrow meetings and just a whole bunch of stuff. So we're about to have the museum with the building for the museum. We're about to have that pretty much secured within the next couple of days, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm, I'm very excited to be able to announce that pretty soon. And once we get the building secure, which will be in a couple of days, we're going to start getting the curating together while we're doing mile renovation. So I'm going to keep everybody posted with that. So we're very excited about that. But we're here. We are here, ladies and gentlemen. We are here. Oh, man, what do we It's so much we got to get into tonight or today. So as you guys know, Queen Elizabeth of Britain the powerful monarch of Britain. She has passed away at the age of, what, 96, right? She's 96 years old, correct? She's 96 years old. She passed away. The royal crime family, and I'm just going to speak the truth. The royal crime family, they lost another one. You know, these, these people seem to live a long ass time. You know, is that unless they get off like Princess Diana, they offed her. You know, she was up there with Dodie Fayed, about to have that non-white baby, so they got her out the paint allegedly, allegedly. But the British family, the royal family, let's let's understand history here, because there's a lot of mixed reviews on the death of Queen Elizabeth. There's a lot of mixed reviews. Now, most FBAs, we don't give a damn. Let's be clear. Most FBAs don't give a damn. What's interesting, a lot of these other people from the diaspora, they seem to be bent out of shape about it. And then a lot of them are trying to project that onto us. Like this woman tweeted right here. Let me show y'all this tweet and everybody got on her bumper for this. This woman is in the UK. Portia Antonia Alexis, this woman here. This is the woman in the UK, and she's like, what did I say? I put up a tweet. What was my tweet? I was like, oh, this is some of y'all right now, because some some of these non-FBAs are looking like Stephen from Django right about now. A lot of them are bucking their eyes with the side of Joloff. So a lot of these non-FBAs are hopping in. She's like, yeah, false. Luckily, most FBAs are mourning the queen with their international friends today. Who? <laughs> Let me talk to the FBA family. Which one, of, which one of you guys are mourning the queen? That's why we're titled the show today. Who's mourning the queen? Where's the FBA family mourning the damn queen? I, do they know how much we don't give a damn? I can speak for FBAs right now. I can speak for black Americans who descended from slaves and freedmen. I can pretty much speak for them right now. We don't give a damn about no queen of England. We ain't tripping on her. Ma'am, don't try to drag us into the buffoonery. Don't drag us in that. Who's in? Who's an FBA in here dry, uh, dropping tears for the queen? Well, we so don't give a damn. <laughs> and don't be fooled by a couple of black folks in Hollywood. There, there might be some FBA actors and actresses in Hollywood who are just trying to get some, some airtime. They'll say, oh, God, the queen has died. And then they'll get invited on Good Morning America to discuss their feelings about the queen. You know, niggas are auditioning. You, uh, they don't count. 
they don't count. Some black folks in Hollywood who are auditioning. They want to get some screen time on Good Morning America or The View so that some producers can see them and possibly cast them in the movie. That don't count. These are niggas hustling. These, they're just hustling and I ain't mad at their hustle. But folks, just the average everyday foundational black American, man, nobody gives a damn about that. And we're not even being insensitive. We just don't care. Because we understand the history and we, we know what it is. See, we, we understand white supremacy for what it is, you know, because see, they didn't really play no games with us. They they did a Jedi mind trick on a lot of these other folks around the world, man. They, they did somewhat of a Jedi mind trick, but they were so physically brutal that brutality woke us up to reality. It didn't let us go to sleep too long. You see, so we understand what it is. We see the the monarchy, we see the, the queen and all of them for what they are. We look at them as a crime family. We already know how scandalous they are. But boy, some of these folks in the diaspora family, do y'all see all the, the, the Caribbeans and some of these African folks really got the cape on? Yeah, the only queen we recognize is Aretha Franklin and Queen Latifah. That's it. But man, looking at some of the comments from some of these folks this is the this is the president of nigeria hold on yeah yeah this is the president of nigeria right here president baruti over there he's like i'm gonna read it in his voice how i think he's reading my family and i and the more than 200 million nigerians have learned with immense sadness of the passing of queen elizabeth ii at the end of her unique and wonderful 70 year reign she was the only British sovereign known to 90% of our population lord not my, my Nigerian family what's happening Niger where y'all at man what's happening see your president is up here bucking them eyes man come on bro that, that British Britain colonized that place and just raped the resources. A wonderful 70 year reign of resource deprivation, resource rape, brutality. That's wonderful. Nigga, what are you talking about? See, this is why we we have cultural issues here between FBA and a lot of people. You're taking your colonization with a smile. Damn, brother. We're talking about the royal family. These people colonized damn near all the planet and drained and raped them of resources, especially Africa. Boy, they went into Africa and just ran roughshod on the people and the resources and still doing it. They're still doing it, ladies and gentlemen. These countries over there are not really independent. Because I've, I've had a couple of white supremacists try to hop in. Well, listen, dude, she were, she oversaw the end of colonization in those countries, dude. It's not her fault. She saw the end of colonization, man. She didn't assist with the end of so-called colonization. There were bloody uprisings where people brutally fought against the colonization. So they physically got out of those places, but they still economically controlled them. Britain still economically controls a lot of those um, countries in Africa and the Caribbean. They control the economy. And they put in puppet leaders who they control because if there's a real independent thinker that goes on in these countries and rise up through the ranks, hell, they just have them killed. They'll send a jackal in there to kill them. Jackal meaning these um, international hitmen. Or they'll just put all types of sanctions on these countries and destabilize their economy. So let's not trip on the word independent because they're independent on paper, but these people still are under the thumb of the British. And that's why I, I told people a long time ago, a lot of folks over there in Africa and the Caribbean, and not all of my brothers and sisters, I'm not trying to dump on y'all, but a lot of them, and unfortunately, they think that they are dark-skinned Britons. A lot of people think that they're just dark-skinned Britons, man, and that's how this president is talking. 
talking about she's the only British sovereign known in a wonderful 70 year reign like you have something in common with them. See that that mindset has to be shook in order for us to really get a global pan-Africanism type thing. That's why the pan-African thing ain't working. We can't build any pan-Africanism with that mentality. And it ain't just that that president. It ain't just him. There's so many other people bucking their eyes. Who is this guy? This is, uh, I want to say this is a Jamaican dude. And people are trying to criticize us for not putting the cape on. Here's some, I think Tyrone Reed is Jamaican. We don't have to send flowers to Buckingham Palace, but we can be silent. It's basic human dignity. These mean-spirited comments are unworthy. A family has lost its matriarch, a country its monarch. It's beyond us to pause our differences and allow them to mourn in peace. Nigga, please. Where's Tyrone Reed from? Jamaica, all right. The hairline, you see the hairline. All right, he's Jamaican. He works for some, he's a Jamaican journalist, buck dancing, fool. This is the place that colonized and enslaved Jamaicans and he up here with the damn cape on. Come on, I tell y'all, man, a lot of these folks think that they're just dark-skinned Britons talking about we should be peaceful. Did they colonize you peacefully, dude? Did they colonize Africa peacefully? No, they did not. They didn't colonize and rape and drain the resources peacefully. So why should we be peaceful and let them rest in peace? Why do we owe them something that they have not given us? And look, we understand the British colonies over here, we were enslaved by them, us foundational black Americans. They enslaved us over here. We never forgot. We understand what it is. We know that the British white supremacists are no different from their American white supremacist cousins. They're one and the same, so we don't trip. We don't trip. But boy, these other groups are just bucking those eyes, something fierce. Who's this right here? Oh, God, is this the head of state over here? Who is this guy over here? Who is this guy? Um, what's this guy's name, guys? Is this the president of Jamaica? The Jamaican government has announced a series of activities, including 12 days of national mourning to mark Thursday's death of Queen Elizabeth II, who was the country's head of state. So they're going to have a, a mourning, a mass mourning of Queen Elizabeth over there in Jamaica. Boy, y'all are insane. The mental colonization ain't no joke. Why? What exa- What's your justification for mourning somebody who colonized the hell out of you and will not give you any type of reparations or resources? They don't allocate resources to these countries. These countries are as poor as ever and you sitting up here mourning somebody who's running around here with all of the resources that you generated for them. You see, this is why FBA is stuck. This is why we're like, hey, you know, we're going to have to kind of do our own thing for a little minute. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, you want to know why? This is why right here. This is why foundational black Americans are saying, hey, man, we're going to let y'all do you because so we, we, the, the signals are getting mixed here. We ain't on the same page as far as a lot of stuff, man. We don't know what y'all own right now, man. So look, whatever you own, just do you. We going to handle this thing over here, man, because we... I don't know what y'all on, man. You think people sitting up here boohooing for the queen is going to come over here and really try to build something with us, man. And I'm not trying to beat up on anybody, but let's just keep it. Let's just put all of this on the table. This is what we're talking about. This is why the FBA movement, man, has taken off the way it has, because we're seeing the get down over there in some of these places, man. And not all of the people are like this, but just way too many. Just way too many. I mean, and some of these people over here are just straight up outright crying and boohooing. I mean, for real, for real. Hold on. I, there's video of some of these folks. Look, look at this right here. This ain't just the, the politicians. These are some of the people on the ground. See, because some people can say, oh, that was just the politicians trying to be politically correct. No, it's the everyday average citizen. Some of those citizens are out there with the jerk chicken in tears. Hold on. 
Hold on. This is from um, the Jamaican Observer. Jamaicans are reacting to the death of Queen Elizabeth. Hold on. Let me let me play this. Hold on. Let's let's listen to what they have to say. Hold on. Listen to them. Hold on. Well, I feel so sad in a man. And a nice lady. And we like how she walk. We like how she talk. And I, I miss her. And I feel it. So life goes on. It just said that. All we have to do is bury her and just give God thanks and praise. Blessed love. Um, she have, she have do her time and the Lord take her home now. So I, I hope she repent and serve the Lord before she go. You understand? I tell her time now, so she'll be even past the time. <laughs> so that's how things go. We all have to go one day. Well, I did. To me, you know, she told if she's still here. Yeah, she told if you see, but she just gone and say go. But God go with her. I mean, I don't have any reaction to her death. So. Uh, I didn't expect her to die so suddenly. But you know, considering the fact that she would have been with us for quite a long while, but um, I mean, I just hope all goes well for the country. Well, you know, it has shaken us up because knowing that she she was around for such a long time and she's one of the longest serving um whatever. And you know, to lose her like this you now, it leave back her impact and we know we're not gonna replace her, we cannot replace her for the long service that she has done. So if what what service? What what service? Feel it. Yeah, that sure can also. Well I'll say I'm not surprised. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Not to say that she won't be missed or her service won't be appreciated, but she was ninety six, so it What service? It was expected. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. They keep saying her service. What, what service did this woman provide? What are they talking about? Any any Jamaicans in the room here? What are, what are y'all talking about? Help me out, because maybe I'm missing something. I don't want to jump the gun. I don't want to jump the gun, ladies and gentlemen, but maybe I'm missing something. What services did this woman provide except cultural rape? resource rape colonization and devastation to that country people y'all these folks are on camera no dental work they teeth janky to be damned talking about thank you bumbaclot thank you for your services you can't even get dental work going on and you talking about thank you for your damn services what are y'all talking about man help me out family do we have any Jamaican family in the room? Help me out. What are y'all talking about? See, that this is what makes us different culturally. This is what makes us different culturally. Now understand, they come over here with that mentality of worshiping the queen, and then y'all got all the smoke for us. The people who colonized that ass Oh, Bumba Clyde. Oh, see the queen. God bless the queen. The queen, Bumba Clyde. Let's pour out a little ginger beer for the queen. Pour out a little rum for the queen, Bumba Clyde. Yeah. But with us, the people who actually help you, oh, you damn Yankee nigga, stay away from those niggas. We got to stay away from the Yankee nigga Akata. Y'all, you got to stay away from us, and we're the only folks helping you. The queen then sat here and raped the island, and the monarchy, the, the royal family just exploited everybody over there. You can't even get your teeth fixed. Oh, oh, she died. Oh, no, take me, Bumbaglad. Take me, Lord, Bumbaglad. The government, the government. <laughs> y'all niggas, y'all niggas. And, and this is who created hip hop, by the way. The, these are the people who helped create hip hop. Boo hooing for the queen who exploited them, but y'all created hip hop. Yeah, right. Okay. Hip hop was all about going against anti black racism. Hip hop was a part, part of the culture of hip hop was anti establishment, going against the oppressive establishment. That was the key tenet of, of, of hip hop music, of hip hop culture, was going against the system, going against white supremacy. That was the key ingredient of hip hop. That's why nobody, all that shit about Puerto Ricans and all that helped create it bullshit. It was foundation of black Americans. That has always been the glue to hold hip hop together. 
the consciousness and us going against the oppressive system. When you look at hip hop, everything was going against the system. The system um, wouldn't allow us to play instruments in school, so we created our own instruments with the turntables and we used the break beats. Um, we couldn't get into some of those bougie clubs or some of those clubs where you had to be well-dressed, so people created their clubs on the block. That was the foundation of black American mindset. These dudes over here with that, we love the queen, they, they, they didn't have that in their spirit, man. They didn't have that in their spirit. I'm not trying to hate on anybody, but the, I'm, I'm letting you see the cultural differences here. You see, hip hop was a rebellious culture. Everything about hip hop was rebellion. It was rebelling against the oppressive system. These niggas up here talking about, oh, no, I love the queen. She did us so well. She ran the country so great. Um, is there a toothbrush anyone can let me borrow? Bumba clad. Lord. Oh, let me let me look at some more clips. It's all over the place, man. The caping and the buck dancing. But I will say this. I will say this. I got to give props. The only really African country that really came out and, and, and said some real fly stuff was basically the brothers and sisters down in South Africa. I, you know, I got a lot of love for South Africa and, and particularly the EFF, you know, Julius Malema's folks. They came out, they made a great statement. They went opposite of all of these other people. And to me, I think this is the only African nation that really spoke some real truth to power here. But again, they they are a certain sector within South Africa, by the way, because there are some South African coons, but you do have riders out there. Um, this is the EFF statement. What do they say? Well, they went in. Shout out to them. Shout out to the EFF. That's why y'all see I've always supported Julius Malema and those guys. They're riders. This is... If y'all want some pan-Africanism, this is the kind of vibe I'm on right here. This is who I rock with. He said, okay. The economic freedom fighters notes the death of Elizabeth Mary Windsor, the queen of the United Kingdom, and the ceremonial head of state of several countries that were colonized by the United Kingdom. She ascended to the throne in 1952, reigning for 70 years as the head of an institution built up, sustained, and living off the brutal legacy of dehumanization of millions of people around the world. We do not mourn the death of Elizabeth because to her, to us, her death is a reminder of a very tragic period in this country and Africa's history. Britain, under the leadership of the royal family, took over control of this territory that would become South Africa in 1795 and took permanent control of the territory in 1806. From that moment onward, native people of this land have never known peace, nor have they ever enjoyed the fruits of the riches of this land. Y'all better speak, man. I'll let y'all go to it to read the rest. Y'all better speak that truth to power. That's what I'm talking about. Speak the truth and shame the damn devil. Shout out to them brothers and sisters over there who's on that vibe. I respect that. Just tell the truth. I don't know what they're doing in some of these other African and Caribbean countries with the damn cape on like that. Yeah, they get it. We get it over here and they get it. Do y'all know? This? I mean, they colonize half the damn planet. Oh, shit, the majority of the planet. I mean, they, they colonize parts of China. They colonize all over the world, man. These people have dominated the non-white people of the planet. And so many, I see so many African people with the damn cape on crying. Man, if y'all don't stop, what are you crying for? They, These people, man, stole so many resources. They got all of the artifacts up there in the, the British Museum that they won't give back. They're, they're playing games with that. The queen... She got y'all know she got access to some of the biggest diamonds out of Africa. I think the biggest, the largest cut diamond in the world she has or she had. She owned that. Did y'all know that? There's a um, the largest cut diamond in the world. And y'all can Google that. The diamond is called the Star of Africa. And she used to rock that. She owned that. She used to rock that diamond. And all of those blood diamonds and all of that ill gotten 
those jewels and precious metals that come out of Africa. Remember, they're clicked in with the De Beers and all of that stuff. The, the De Beers is right there in London. So yeah, look up um, the Star of Africa diamond, the largest cut diamond in the world. That was hers. It's in her crown. And y'all sitting up boohooing, the people over there starving, and she's up there with a gazillion dollar diamond in her crown. And y'all sitting over there, teeth told the hell up. Oh, God bless the queen. Look at the beautiful diamond. <laughs> the diamond is beautiful. Oh, I love her. Oh, any dental floss, anybody can let me borrow. <laughs> Bumba clot. Oh, sick niggas. Come on, man. Wow. But listen, you know what's interesting? Y'all remember that professor out of um, Pennsylvania? Ooh, what is her name? The one we were on her bumper, that professor who was calling us Akadas. Hold on, let me look it up real quick while I'm talking. That um, that um, professor over there in Pennsylvania, let me look it up while I'm talking to you guys. She, was, she called us Akadas. Hold on. What is her name? Uju Anaya, I think that's her name. Now y'all remember, okay, let me let me throw some of this stuff on the screen. Now y'all remember, she was um, calling us Akadas and we got on her bumper a few weeks ago about that. There's a bunch of tweets and she's teaching up there at um, um, in, in Pennsylvania and um, we found some old tweets of her. She's a feminist teacher so she was, you know, referring to us as Akadas. She's like, yeah, Carnegie Mellon, that's where she she teaches. So people have been kind of kind of calling up there for the last like month or so, like getting on them like, "Hey man, y'all y'all got this teacher up here referring to foundation of black Americans as Akadas." I mean, our, we don't want that kind of energy if they're black students, if they're foundation of black American students up there, that would be somewhat of a hostile environment. So people have been on her bumper. So now, I guess she kind of has she has a rep for trying to be sassy and speaking kind of slick. So she made a comment about the queen dying. She was like, "Yes, I hope the queen has an excruciating death." So she's trying to be edgy. And the white folks bit back at her. Even Jeff Bezos said something. So now the white people are getting on her bumper. Right here, university rebukes professor who tweet about dying queen, whose response got a response from Jeff Bezos, professor whose tweet about Queen Elizabeth was called out by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, among others, and it has been rebuked by the university. Dr. Uju Anaya, professor of Department of Modern Languages at Carnegie Mellon, tweeted Thursday when the news said that the queen was in grave condition. She said, I heard the chief monarch was a thieving, raping, genocidal empire of a, of a thieving, rage raping genocidal empire is finally dying. May her pain be excruciating. So now a lot of white folks started getting on her bumper. Now what she said was true and here's Carnegie Mellon. They put out a statement. We do not condone the offensive and objectionable messages posted by Uju Anaya today on her personal social media. Free expression is the core to the mission of higher education. However, the views she shared absolutely do not represent the values of the institution nor the standards of discourse we seek to foster. Okay? So, what happened was, this woman, you know, she tried to be like us and kind of be edgy, but the thing is, she lost a lot of FBA support with that Akata stuff. Yeah, they're about to get, they're about to fire her. Yeah, they're about to fire her pretty soon. But here's the thing see when they saw that she don't have any FBA support like that her FBA support is weak they're like hey this is an opportunity to get her out the pain you see that's why a lot of y'all who come over here don't think that you can come over here and just talk greasy and everything is all gravy to us y'all think if you get around white people and talk greasy about us that means you're in there. See, she painted herself in the corner. Let, let me let some of the people with that tether mindset understand. Y'all come over here and think you're going to dump on us. If we stop supporting you and if you get on our bad side, you ain't got no backup. 
because the white supremacists will eventually turn on you. And the reason why it's hard for them to turn on certain black folks is because a lot of us have a lot of grassroots support. So if you turn on certain black folks, the grassroots will be there to support and call out the people who's doing the, um, the detriment. We'll call out white society. We'll have the people's back. But see, she lost all grassroots support with all of that Akata stuff. Ain't no, we ain't really rocking with her like that. And right now they, they're on her bumper and she don't really have no strong backup like that. You see, she put herself out there. Don't come to us like, oh, look at what the white folks are doing. Yeah, but I'm an Akata though, remember? So since we're all types of Akatas, you handle that. We gonna let you handle that. You dig? We gonna let you handle that. See, when the big dogs start coming at you and you ain't got no backup, you ass out. You, you see? Because Carnegie Mellon, that's a big university. And, you, and if Jeff Bezos didn't holler, he didn't clap back at you? You, you dig? Now, y'all better understand the Jeff Bezoses and people like that, they give big money to some of these damn universities. Some of these people give a lot of big money to these universities. Do y'all think that these big money people and these universities are going to jeopardize their relationship with these big money people? For her ass, who's very replaceable, you see? That's why people from the tether class, y'all better get some act right when y'all come over here with that bullshit. Don't think you safe coming over here dumping on us, talking all types of greasy, and that we won't clap back and then leave you out there by yourself. See, that's why people have a problem with us um, delineating our lineage because they need us as backup, man. They got to be like, hey, we all black when it comes to us backing them up and protecting them. Because they can't go at it on themselves on, on their own. When things get hot, they can't go at it on their own. And yet, unfortunately, that did happen to our brother Bill Cosby. And again, I spoke to Bill Cosby and we had some long conversations and loved that brother. He's completely innocent, by the way. But again, with, with, our, with our brother Bill Cosby, when he did the pound cake speech, unfortunately, the white media utilized that to kind of separate the grassroots support from Bill Cosby and once they saw that that grassroots support for brother Bill Cosby was splintered that's when they went in for the kill you see so y'all better understand all of that attacking the black grassroots because you think you're in there you got your your university tenure so you think you in there for life no these people will get you up out the paint look y'all understand Remember when Kamala and them, they were running and I was talking about Kamala and boy, the entire DNC attacked me. I'm talking about the top brass. I'm talking about all the top blue check white supremacist suspects over at the DNC and their Negro flunkies were coming at me. All of them. I'm talking about the top dogs and I still stood strong. You dig? Because grassroots support. That's why the white supremacists are always trying to orchestrate different cointel pro tactics to try to chip at the reputation of people who have strong grassroots following. That's why you always see these trolls and bots and these agent provocateurs trying to put out all types of negative jive ass stories about me with all types of false criminal activity from the 80s and 90s. Again, they try to make me out to be dolomite that's some stuff coming from the top. Those are that's the same stuff they would do with the Black Panthers. They would put out information to try to dissuade people from supporting them. And people see how silly the stuff is. It it actually backfires because people see how silly it is. And plus people don't even give a damn about that. But we have to understand and it's very important to not alienate the black grassroots base. That's very important. Yes, Howard Dean came after me, dude. Howard Dean cursed me out on Twitter. That dude is the top dog at the DNC. Dude cursed me the hell out on Twitter. You think? And I'm still doing what I do. So it's very important. But man, listen, man, we look, if we want to get a coalition, man, 
we can't get a coalition with folks with this zaddy worship, man. It's too much zaddy worshiping going on. They zaddy worship, and then they come over here and have this vitriol towards us. Our brother Mike Bags, he found this one chick. She's she owns some type of Joloff restaurant or kitchen somewhere out there in um Maryland. And boy, she got all types of tweets, and people are giving her janky Yelp reviews right now. But yeah, this woman here, boy, she got just dozens and dozens of tweets calling us all types of akadas while living over here. Look at some of this. Yeah. I hated this Akata snitch. I'm Akata in the spirit and soul got me effed up. Hold on. Just nothing but Akata tweets. Hold on. Um, ah, I see how this Akata girl is begging my colleague to F her. He say no. If he does, he will die because his wife in Nigeria took him to shrine. Okay, I don't know what that means. Some kind of weird stuff. And I tell y'all, I've always said a lot of these foreign tether women, they got a real bug in their ass about foundation of black American women. They are very damn jealous. A lot of their vitriol is specifically aimed at foundation of black American women. Small thing Akata will hit you with the, you think you're better than me? No, sis. You think I'm better than you. That's on you and you're right. Once these Akata know you're Nigerian, the next thing is for you to make Joloff rice for them. There's this one that even wants me to make him foo-foo and some puff puff. Foo-foo? No, okay. We ain't tripping on no damn Joloff. Okay, y'all with the Joloff. Man. Y'all with that Joloff family, do you. Don't be on some wooden trick pony type of thing with that Joloff. Hold on. See how this Akata girl... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. She said that already. Hold on. Let me see another tweet from her. Every time listening to a Nigerian music, Akata, are you from the islands? Okay. Foreign babes love Nigerian men because Nigerian men dare not try their misogynistic nonsense with them. A Nigerian man can tell his Nigerian wife he wants fresh soup every day. But let him marry an Akata, you will see him in the kitchen cooking his own food. Okay. So this is these folks sit around and say this stuff all day, but when we call them out, we're divisive. We ain't trying to eat no damn foo foo. I mean, not not nobody's hating your dish. And we we're not trying to eat all that. Y'all stop it. Y'all stop it. Yeah, they, y'all be talking about Joloff, man. We got soul food, fried chicken, mac and cheese, man. We got all types of flies. So we're not hating on your stuff, but we we're not coveting your Joloff. We're really not. Yeah, Fufu looks like Play-Doh. We're not trying to really eat that stuff. That's not really appealing to us like that, to be honest. And we're not hating on you. But y'all get over here with this crazy jealousy. Yeah, we are rent-free. That's where the divisiveness is. This is, yeah, she got the divestor wig and all. This is why we're like, hey, man, yeah, we're going to have to do some straightening here. We're going to have to get some straightening going on. And did y'all see the video? I put this video, this one lady, I want to say she's somewhere over there in Africa. I don't know, but she's up here praising white men. Hold on. Where's this thing? Hold on. And she has the full divestment wig and all. She's up here talking about how, how well white men treat women. She's talking about how well white men treat women. Hold on, y'all got to see the divestment wig. Hold on, y'all got to play this again. I played this the other day, but we got to play this again and study it. Hold, Hold on, on, listen to this. Hold on. White men are very are gentlemen. This is no has no doubt because that is true. They are really gentle because these guys will always do anything for you. They will show you love. They will treat you well. They will take you to places. They will do. They will do anything for you literally everything they will do everything for you these guys are gentlemen they will die for you they will do things that an african guy will think hey please this is too much white men are really gentlemen there's nothing they can never do and white okay. men are very are gentlemen okay. all right all right so she said white man there's nothing that a white man won't do for you the white men would die for you please no you will die for the white man he ain't about to die for you. 
man, we, we can't, what, what are we going to build with this, family? Now, these are the type of people who pr who's crying over the queen dying right now. These are the kind of people who's crying right now over the queen dying. What are we going to really build with that? And I'm not trying to beat up on Oh, okay. Sorry about that. My microphone was off. My mic was off. But look, th these are the people. My microphone was off. I'm sorry, guys. But yeah, right, right here, man. These are the people who will, who's crying right now because the Queen of England died. The Queen of Britain. People look. These are the people with this, the janky wig, cakes open janky wig. These are the type of people who's crying over the queen dying. What what are we really going to build with them? What are we going to build with them, family? If we're going to be honest. See, this is why, again, you want to know why the FBA movement is just popping off the way it is? Ladies and gentlemen, this is why. This is why the movement is popping off right now. Because we, we understand these folks crying over the queen and talking about the white man loves me and if you get a white man, he's going to take care of you. No. And look, some of those mammies and bedwinches get over here. There was a TikTok that went viral where there was a white man who went on these dates. He went around the country. His whole thing was he's going to go on 50 dates with 50 women around the country. And he went, he's a white man. He went on a bunch of dates with white women. Do y'all know the divesters had a hissy fit? The divesters were all in their feelings. Boy, their, their divestment wigs were sweating. It was embarrassing, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to the divesters. They're upset with Zaddy because Zaddy wants to be with white women. Lord, hold on. Listen to this, family. Hold on. Show of going on a date with a woman from every state. And let me just show you why he's getting a lot of hate. I think it's fair to say that my guy has a type but here's what really makes me mad this is the girl he went on a date with from hawaii like sir what you not gonna do you not gonna play us sir you not gonna play us sir then this is the girl he went on a date with from new mexico who is actually if you look on her instagram from long island so sir if you have a type you didn't even have to go across 50 states for that. Like, you really just dated the same girl in every single state. Like, I, where, where? Where is the seasoning? Let me know y'all thoughts in the comments because I'm feeling like this was unnecessary. Okay, Miss Chin Lady. And here's some more. Here's some more. They were in their feelings. Hold on. They were very upset with Zaddy. Hold on. What? Yeah. I'm trying to... Say what's time with the video. They're all blondes, brunettes, redheads with this shade. You, you ain't gotta find a girl like me or even like a hue of melanin on that list. Okay, y'all up here whining about Zaddy. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. Hold on. I'm trying not to get a copyright strike. Okay. The part that's gagging me is that there are people in the comments trying to convince me that they are able to find one that looks the most attractive out of all those girls. This, this is shameful that these women are up here crying over Zaddy. Hold on. Da, 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 da. I'm trying to go. Okay, here's some more. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Came across this video here, and I'm, I'm stitching it so you can kind of see. I've personally taken offense to this, and I am admitting that's part of my, like, past. And, like, I've dated a guy, maybe multiple, who are kind of, like, having a preference like this and obviously all these girls are gorgeous and they seem excellent um it's just that it just it's sad to me this woman act like she about to cry because why are we not attracted to people who aren't white and i lord I'm not trying to say that you can't like like a certain way that people look, but you know, like out of 50, you're doing this for a video, not a single girl is black. 
And I think maybe there's like a light skin, maybe mixed girl, but you know what I mean. Okay, um, okay. These, these these women are about to cry because that is with white women. In every single fucking state. I do not want to see blonde hair, blue eyes for every single fucking state. I want to see black girls, Hispanic girls, Asian girls, uh, Arabic girls. I want to see freaking Indian girls. No, you I don't. No, 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 stop all that. She's trying to all lives matter and she's mad because he, Zaddy ain't choosing none of them. All right? Just mad because Zaddy don't want none of them. Every single body in between, okay? The United States is one of, if not the most diverse countries in the fucking world. Okay, 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 hold on. He probably has a type, 50 states, whatever. Then he got to Hawaii. Who goes? Hawaii? Blonde hair, blue eye, white girl. Is represented Hawaii. Okay. Y'all are taking L's, man. Okay, y'all. Boy, y'all taking L's on this one. Hold on, oh, let me go back here. All right. Man, that's sad that all these women are up here whining about Zaddy dating white women. He's dating white women. He wants to date people within, within his damn race. Let him do that. This whole desperate to be accepted by Zaddy Man, get that up out of here. And again, most of these folks, there's foreign flags. If you look at their TikToks, a lot of them are foreign flags. Get off that stuff, man. If Zaddy don't choose you, the, the sky is falling. That's sick bedwinch mentality. Y'all get comfortable with your blackness. Uh, See, a lot of these folks come from these places, they're running from themselves, and they come over here and they get a reminder of white supremacy, and hey, at the end of the day, the white man, if he has a real preference, and he wants to show off his preference, he's going to show off the white women. See, a lot of these bedwenches, they're used to being the dirty little secret. Zaddy has to get at them in the middle of the night somewhere. They got to take them somewhere off in some crevice where nobody can see him. It's always secretive. And then the bedwinches convince themselves, yeah, we got to keep it a secret because the black men going to be hating because the black men don't want to see my joy. That's why Zaddy is taking me to this hole in the wall somewhere off in the ghetto that nobody knows about. That's why Zaddy has to come creep me in in the middle of the night because all these black men be hating on, on my black girl magic with Zaddy. It's that type of thing. No, Zaddy don't want you to be seen around his folks. Let's keep it a buck. Yeah, this dude, if he's going to go out here and talk about his preference, yeah, that's usually how it works. They have gutter sex with the plantation help and then they show off white wifey. They show off their real preference. Duh. That's what it is. Y'all better wake up to the reality. Some of these bed winch wake up calls are very interesting. And you know something else that was real interesting? This actress, Gina Torres, she did an interview very interesting interview talking about taking roles as a as a black woman because she's a Latina as a Latina and most people didn't know that Gina Torres was Latina nobody knew that she's been on a, a lot of stuff she's acted in a lot of movies nobody knew that Gina Torres was Latina this is Gina Torres right here for those if that name doesn't sound familiar you've seen her face in many black movies She's been in a lot of black movies playing a black woman, but now she's like, you know what? I felt trapped being a Latino woman having to play black women roles. You didn't feel trapped enough to cast the little checks that you got. Hold on, this is, let me read some of the article here. This is what I don't like. These people who have to, it's all sad and detrimental that they have to be lumped in with us. Go do you because you're not accepted in Latino society. Latina means Italian looking um, Hispanic person. Truth be told, I've said this before, 
See, these people want to project a lot of their insecurities and dysfunctions onto us. No, we're very clear about who we are. But these folks come from these Latin societies with that sick ass meta la la rasa nonsense. And she's too black to be accepted into Latina society. So she's, in her mind, reduced to taking black roles. So Afro-Latina actress Gina Torres is opening up about her struggles in Hollywood and how she often felt pigeonholed when it came to the kind of roles she was offered. The Bronx native, who's the daughter of Cuban parents, said that as an actress, she felt like she had no place in the Hollywood world. There was no place for me as a Latina and then as a black woman, I didn't identify as a black woman. You see, because for me, it was cultural. Family, I keep telling y'all, these folks don't look at themselves as black. They look at us as something different. They are only black. They have to bite their lip and accept blackness in order for them to get a bag. How many times do we have to tell y'all this, man? They keep proving this over and over again. They only begrudgingly accept blackness when there's a bag involved. That's really the only way they can get a bag. Yeah, Lawrence Fishburne married her, by the way. They're divorced. But they're only black when there's a bag involved. Yeah, I be black for right now, but in my mind, oh, I hate this. Oh, I hate reducing myself to this. So, of course, I present black. I'm a black woman, again, in a political sense, but I'm also Cuban. When you're here in the United States and they ask you, they ask you what, and they ask you to be in a box and you don't fit into the box culturally, it's different. It's not one that I identified with, but to work, to survive, it was something that I had to learn. No, 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 no. It was something that you had to accept begrudgingly. In order to work, in order to make a bag, in order to make a living, you had to come to the reality that you are a black person phenotypically, even though in your mind, you're some exotic Latina in your mind. In the real world, you had to accept that you are a black person, which you despise, but you had to accept it in order to eat. Lord. And check this part out. For Torres, she practiced what she explained as a Jedi mind trick. She's doing a Jedi mind trick on herself to fit in the industry when it came to accepting roles as a Latina woman to learn to then learn whatever black was she had to learn what black was and then feel like I was alienating that other part of myself that Latina self she says to keep myself from just being sad all the time about not being able to fully experience and express the entirety of myself so it was just so sad having to act like a black person. It was just so sad for me. Oh, woes me. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, we don't need you let the welfare feed you. We don't need you up here being sad to act like us. Go be something else. Oops, you can't. Don't bring your insecurities over here because you can't get accepted into Latino society in the white Latino society. That's just what it is. That's something to do with that culture. Y'all work that out. Y'all don't bring that filth over here to us. We don't need it. We don't need your sad asses over here with all of that. We can do us. I wish more FBA actors get the roles that they need to get so that you can go somewhere and play a Cuban or whatever you need to play. Get mad at j Lonem taking all of the white Latino roles that you so covet and sell my Hayek and all of them. Get mad at them. Don't come over here with your sadness to us. We don't need your sad ass. I'm cool on these folks coming around us with all of these insecurities and they have to um, begrud begrudgingly accept blackness. Get, I don't need it. We don't need you, man. This is such a, a put upon thing on your culture that you just have to accept. You have to just 
degrade yourself and and act like us go to hell man go to hell you're not doing any of us no favors we're good yeah you're too dark to play selena you can't play those roles because they don't accept you as one of those people. That's why they got y'all marginalized in these Hispanic countries. They got y'all carted off on the other side of the island. Y'all act like we don't go to these places. We didn't been down to Costa Rica and um, um, Colombia, Brazil, and we see the, the white Brazilians and the white Costa Ricans and the white Colombians living over here and the darker ones, their communities are all over there off to the other side. Well, they just, they keep you hidden. You're like some little secret over there. You see? But yeah, we're good. You do you, we'll do us. And we don't, I don't want no more sad people coming over here being forced to identify with us so they can get a bag. No, 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 no. Go on somewhere else. But I digress. You know, and and speaking of Caribbean, did y'all see up there in New York at the West Indian Day Parade? This came out. This was at the West Indian Day Parade. They had some of them mammies. They were up there twerking on white cops out there. They were out there jumping on white cops, coochie popping at the West Indian Day Parade. Lord... Are, are we going to build a coalition with this? They can't wait to get over here and find them a zaddy. Raunchy video shows NYPD cop grinding with dancer. They were doing all types of debauchery and ratchetness over there. The minute they see a white zaddy cop, a colonizer, this guy has a an alt-right hairstyle. Well, the, the bed wenches and mammies couldn't wait to go jump on that. They love a colonizer. The minute one of these tether bed wench mammy see a colonizer boy they get wet but we're the Akatas and Yankees and you gotta stay away from us though right well keep staying away we're focused on what we need to focus on ladies and gentlemen and at the point at this moment we're focused on getting our damn reparations we ain't forgot about them reparations we have not forgotten about it ladies and gentlemen speaking of reparations guys let me show y'all a new Jedi mind trick. Speaking of Jedi mind trick, let me show y'all a new con game that they're trying to do. Speaking of white and Latinos, there's an ad that I saw. It was on my Instagram, and I want to post this up right here. There's something called the, pu the Public Justice Team, and I saw this ad. I want y'all to look at this ad right here. Watch the, watch the con game that they're trying to pull. Let me, um, let me get this together real quick. Hold on. Look at this, this is very interesting. The wording of it. The public justice team. You worked in cotton fields? Experienced shaking and tremors? You can qualify for a Parkinson settlement. So they got a bunch of white people in a cotton field talking about they can get a settlement. And I'm like, wait, wait, what is this? Wait, hold on, I saw this and I'm like, they're using the word cotton field? And what's this about? So I clicked the link. And basically, and it's real, for a minute, I thought it was a joke. For a minute, I thought this was some kind of parody family. I thought it was a joke for a minute, but no, this is a real law firm and this is what they're doing. Listen, they found out that um, in agriculture field, fields, since the 60s, they've been putting certain pesticides on plants and fruit and some of these pesticides are known to give people Parkinson's disease. So what they're doing now, they're saying, hey, if you worked in a cotton field or any kind of agriculture field, if you're white, Hispanic or whatever, you can get a Parkinson's settlement, uh, basically a form of reparations. If you worked in these fields and they had these pesticides that kind of poison you. So you can get a settlement. We we're doing a class action suit that could get you a settlement. Now, this is mainly cornfield, fruit fields, but why did they use cotton? Why did they use cotton? Why did they use the word cotton, by the way? You see, what they're doing is that they're showing a false equivalency because black people are saying, hey, we need reparations because we had to, we were forced to work, work in the cotton fields and we were deprived and we were brutalized and we were we face detriment, 
detrimental treatment working in the cotton fields. So they have to find a white equivalent. So now they're going to say, hey, well, guess what? White people had to work in cotton fields and they suffered. White and Latinos suffered from working in cotton fields too, just like you black people. So they too have a claim for working in cotton fields and being detrimented for working in these cotton fields. And they too need to be compensated. Family, this is the seeds. These are the seeds they're trying to plant, family. They're trying to plant the seeds early, okay? These white supremacists are very slick with what they do. The word cotton really stood out. They didn't have to use the word cotton. They used cotton field for a reason. That stood out to me, cotton. Now, white people work in corn fields and soybean fields and strawberry fields, but they use cotton for a minute to make a false equivalency, fam. So this is the new little con game that they got going on, family. So y'all watch out for this. Y'all watch out for the con game. They're going to try to latch white people and white Hispanics onto the reparations claim. They're very slick with words. You better watch all the words, ladies and gentlemen. But, man, we got to watch out what's going on out here, man. The game is real. A lot of folks are trying to be against us. That's why we got to stand strong. This is why we got to watch everything that's going on, and we have to call it out, ladies and gentlemen. And folks who ain't on code, y'all got to step by the wayside because we as foundational black Americans, we're getting hella codified right now, and a lot of people are threatened by us getting codified, but that's what it is. Anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of Tariq Radio. Glad to have y'all tuning in. I need y'all to hit that subscribe button if you have not already subscribed and hit the bell notification so that you are notified when I am on live, ladies and gentlemen. So again, I will wish you a puppy akute and a